What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews and the next installment of my ongoing series for this year for Knott's Berry Farm's 100 year anniversary. So as I mentioned in the last episode, um, I had the trip scheduled for this week to check out some of the stuff that's going on in Ghost Town and not necessarily be Ghost Town Alive specific. Because a lot of the stuff you can do in Ghost Town is there year-round, and then they theme it for various activities. Um, but Ghost Town Alive does bring certain additional activities um, for the town um, to kind of commemorate the event, have a summer activity for the park, and that sort of thing. So I'm actually going to start off with some of that stuff, um, mostly because I didn't have a chance to experience it this time around. Um, I went with a group on, a, on the first trip. Um, and we were kind of doing the rides, going around the park. Uh, we all showed up at different times, so it was kind of a haphazard way of getting through the day. And then the second trip was with a smaller group, so it was more of just checking out the shops, uh, going on a couple of rides, and that's really about it. But it was a really, really hot afternoon, like around mid 90s, or actually lower 90s to mid 90s. So half day was good enough for us. Um, so. Well, one of the things with Ghost Town that they kind of ramp up and you see a little bit more of is the Old West aspect of this park. So if you've gone on the Calico, Calico train that goes around the park, you know that they have these bandits that start at the back of the train, uh, fake a robbery, interact with some of the guests, mess with and play around with some of the kids, and that sort of thing. So they expand that to more of the park. So you do have, you know, bandits stealing gold. You can see some of the, you can meet up with the sheriff. They have certain additional activities, like if you are, I think they do it for everybody, but it's more geared towards the younger audience that if you want to get deputized as a sheriff or as a deputy for um, for the park, you can do that. They have uh, something as far as um, electing the, the town's next mayor and all that sort of stuff. So everyone's in costume, everyone is all done up to play their part in the Old West style. So if you have a chance to check it out, I definitely recommend doing that. Um, and then in the evenings around 4.30 or 5 o'clock they have a hoedown, so think of that scene from Back to the Future 3 with um, Doc Brown and the teacher, and you kind of get an idea of what you'll expect for that. So that's really the bulk of it um, that I know of. Um, they do have, you know, the usual things like panning for gold, and then you can meet up with characters like Whittles, um, an old prospector I think he is, so they have those things like that that are ongoing. Um, as far as the actual ghost town and the reason why it's my area, favorite area of the park is that because in general, as far as the older audience, there is a lot more things to do. So think of ghost town as the older version of things to do in the park where Camp Snoopy is more geared towards a younger audience. And then the boardwalk and uh, Fiesta Village areas are kind of that in between area where there's not necessarily a lot of stuff for everybody, but it is, you know, um, bringing in the themes and culture of California into the park to have that experience. Um, so as far as some of the major rides to go on, you have of course the usual Ghost Rider and Silver Bullet as far as ro ro roller coaster goes, or roller coasters go. So if you're a fan of the major big roller coasters, those are the two main ones. Um, and then you have the Timber Mountain Log Ride. So if you want a water ride that's uh, twisty and turny, has a drop at the end. Um, then that's the ride to go for. Um, I put the Calico River Rapids ride as in the next category as far as a medium ride goes because it's not necessarily scary, doesn't have any big drops and all that. It does go up and down and curve a lot so it's not scary and neither is Timber Mountain Log Ride but it doesn't have that, quite that finisher as the log ride does so that's why I put it on the medium scale that it's, a, it's more fun and exhilarating and that's about it. Um, I put Mo Pony Express in this medium ride segment just because it has a fast launch. It's a relatively short ride so it's not necessarily anything uh, scary or anything like that but once I get to the next category um, you'll understand why I, more of why I put it here but it is a fun and exhilarating ride. 
Um, it's also on one of those levels that um, if you want to bring somebody in for um, to get them more onto the roller coasters, so between Pony Express and Jaguar at the moment, those are the two rides to bring in the fun. They don't have any loops or anything like that, just quick turn speed and all of that. Um, when Montezuma's Revenge opens, then that will probably go back into the rotation of this kind of category, but until then, um, that's kind of, Pony Express kind of fills that need. Um, as far as the low rides, these are kind of on the slower side. If you want something to relax to um, and just have a seat and go around the park, that's where the Calico Mine Ride comes in, the Calico Train comes in, and then I'm gonna go over into Camp Snoopy and bring in the Grand Sierra Scenic Railroad. So the Calico Train takes you around, you know, the um, a little bit through Ghost Town, through Boardwalk, um, a little bit of Fiesta Village and all of that, so that side of the park, and then the Grand Sierra Scenic Railroad is um, kind of not really through Camp Snoopy, it's just on the side, but you get to see views of, you know, Silver Bullet and Ghost Town, and it's a little story more on the, for the kids, but if you're, you know, family, a small group of friends, it's a good small ride to go on to have some fun, but basically you're, you're on trains in various areas um it's, they're very nicely themed as far as um being train rides for the old west so that's why i recommend going on them whether you go on them earlier or later it doesn't matter but they're always nicer later in the day if you want to go around the park you've been walking and you want to relax and sit down for a little bit of time um, as far as the items that go in the other category, um, I always recommend checking out the shops. They have a lot of uh, storefronts and buildings and structures themed to the Old West, like the um, hotel, the assay office, a blacksmith, a sheriff, a jails, and all of that. So the whole area is themed very nicely. But you also have different stores like the general merchandise store, a bottle cap store, clothing, um, and pop, I think pop guns and souvenirs. The motel has a store in it as well, so I always recommend checking those out. So if you want, you know, a cowboy hat or a mug or things like that, then the shops definitely have merchandise to fulfill a lot of needs. I don't know about every need, but um, they're very well stocked and um, they have a lot of different things that are themed very nicely and are very nicely presented for the interests of the area. Um, and then, of course, if you're on the adult side, then I recommend going to the saloon where you can have some drinks. They usually have beers and a couple of cocktails and things like that. Um, so that's why I say for the adult side, they do have a show that goes on, which I don't know if they moved that show from the saloon to the Birdcage Theater, which is also on the list of if you want to check out a, an Old West show, then the Birdcage Theater has that going on right now a, few, a couple of times throughout the day. Um, the past few times I've gone to the park and I've been in the saloon, I haven't seen the show go on, which is why I've, uh, I think it's moved to the Birdcage Theater and I keep forgetting to check what's going on. But um, between the Birdcage Theater and the saloon, there are good places to, you know, relax, have a seat, enjoy a show, have a drink, and otherwise just have a good relaxing time in the shade. So that's really all for this particular um, update and review. Um, Ghost Town has a, always has a lot of stuff going on throughout the year. Most of this stuff, like I mentioned, is ongoing events through the year. So, you know, going on the roller coasters, panning for gold, checking out the shops, and all of that stuff is always available, but they do do additional things for that are um, related to the Old West town, town during the summer. Mostly because you know it's peak time for the park, so you, when there's a lot of people, you want to have more stuff going on. But a lot of that stuff is there to check out. So even if you want to go for a couple of hours to do some shopping or just go on some rides or go shopping and have some food, then there's plenty to do in Ghost Town, whether it's during the time of Ghost Time, Ghost Town Alive or not. But overall, like. A, if I didn't mention it before this uh, or in a prior episode, the entire area is one of the best themed areas in the park. So, you know, between the two main roller coasters, like Calico River Rapids, Pony Express, all the buildings and all the overall environment, it's all very well done. And if you go during summer when it's really, really hot, it's almost as if you're in an old west town in the middle of summer. Um, just like the old movies when you see, you know, the cowboys and bandits sweating and super hot in their outfits. 
you get that same experience in this case as well because it's super hot and you're in an old west town which is a lot of fun so um i definitely recommend checking it out um it is my favorite area in the park next to the read now the new redesigned fiesta village so i'm still waiting for montezuma's revenge to open up back up to go on that ride from what i hear i think that the renovation on that is moved to next year as in 2024 but they may have gotten the part so it could be later in 2023 but this is all just stuff i've read online so i don't know about the accuracy of any of it but um look out for that reopening so once that reopens i think fiesta village will be a complete town um in the uh, show notes for the episode i'll have the photo gallery from the past couple of visits on the youtube channel i have a couple of videos up there as well um the on the vi the second visit with a smaller group we did have a chance to check out the mariachi band so i took a quick video of that which was Something I wanted to do just to share how much I thought, I I mean, for my amateur year, I thought it was really good. The, I captured a part where the lady transitioned, or the ladies transferred one, from one song to another, and that, that transition was very, very seamless. So I hope I captured that well enough to share on the videos, but um, that's also up on the YouTube channel. Um, I have a link to the playlist I've set up that I'm keeping going with all the stuff um, all the videos that I record, so they're all in one easy to access place, but you can check those out as well. Um, so like I said, the photo gallery and the video playlist will be linked in the show notes for the episode, so you can check out all of that stuff from the visits from this week related to Ghost Town. But that is all for this particular episode. Um, if you want to comment on this post, uh, provide your feedback or anything like that, the website is headphonesneal.reviews, which has links to the social media networks that I'm on and all of that. Uh, ways to support the show, including Patreon, which has an ad-free version of the show. Uh, patrons get early access and all of that, uh, which is patreon.com slash pateln01. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pateln01 as well for um, the videos, gameplay videos, and just everything I put up that if there's a video that I have, and then I stick it there for, uh, for everybody. So definitely subscribe there to help support the show and content in that form. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.